Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So, in tonight's episode of Should You Summon, we'll discuss the various banners that um, celebrating, I guess, the fifth global anniversary, so to speak, as well as the merger of the Japan servers with global servers. It also does celebrate the launch of the Rise Saga Part 2, which you can then play uh, right away. It is an App Store or Play Store update, so bear that in mind. Now that being said, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. Alright, so let's get right into it. Lots of different banners to cover, as well as a short discussion about what, uh, what my thoughts are in terms of Stellar Awakening um, Melissa. Alright, so the first one is a one-time only Fateful, uh, kind of bringing back... Uh, some of the old units, the previous two Global First units, Efi and Eva. If you're willing to pay uh, for 1,000 paid stones, you have a 50-50 chance of getting either one. And of course, all the other units are in the game. If you hit a Stellar Awakened unit, you only get one of the three gauges. However, even ES Philly is in here. Of course, Melissa with her Stellar Awakened is in here. AS Alma is in here. And everyone else, including the bots Rainbow Sisters and Knights. So should you summon? Honestly, at this point, I think you should already have had Efi, especially if you're a light spender. Um, there's been many uh, guides on recommending Efi as this top star um, dream choice, and there have actually been a lot of different banners, including the Shade um, banner that just came out recently um, for eight days, where you could have had a one percent chance of pulling on Efi um, at that time. So hopefully, you already have Efi, in which case we can t now talk about Eva. Uh, oh, Eva. You cost me so much money. She did. You did have a good run. You did have a good run, and you are a dragon, so to speak. However, your time has passed. Uh, Eva, unfortunately, as a pure water unit, has now been surpassed with the water slash meta. Not to say she's not usable still. That's not what I'm saying. But in terms of raw DPS power and uh, innovation slash um, you know utility. She wouldn't be a first choice for me by any stretch at this point. Now, if you already have Eva, there's no reason you can't continue using Eva. It's just that we're talking about summoning on this banner specifically. In which case, Eva would not be the prize. Efi would be. And since you already probably have Efi from previous banners, this is a pass. All right, next one. This was where we're talking about the um, Melissa star chart and whether or not you want to summon for this banner. So if you want to spend a thousand paid stones or a heaven subscription ticket, you can summon for a 10 pull, which by the way, increases the chance of getting the three awakened units of the normal styles, Monefica, Oboro, and Sirius. You can still get other units as well if, if you don't get anything in the 24%. You have 76% chance of the spread out uh, through all the 100 plus units out there. Of course, everyone is in here, and if you happen to hit the Stellar Awakened units, again, one of the three gauges, see? Yes, Melissa, Epoch Maker, Melfi Oh, the newest unit, Melpiphia, is here. And, um, you know, Sukiya, so, so forth. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is, when you get this banner, you get the increased chance of the three uh, normal style units, plus you do get... A guaranteed Slayer Star Chart times one, and an Encounter Melissa ticket, which guarantees you pulling a Melissa, thereby increasing her shadow by 16, and also another Awakening Gauge added. Now, just as a reminder, if you go to the um, Napo Emporio, you can buy retrofit units Star Charts. We've already seen the two in here. However, Slayer is now in here for a mere cost of 400 Severe Gems times two. Because of the cost of that, it really depends on your priorities and what you are looking for moving forward and whether or not she is of use to you. I feel that, um, you know, without much information out there because she's so new, uh, Melissa is still regulated to the support role. Even with Stellar Awakened, she has some DPS capabilities with her um, Stellar move. 
um, which can now inflict elemental break crystal it can also she has a super attack i guess which is a stellar burst can do crystal slash attack single enemy except l um, and these are speed based formulas and so if you use units such as kikyo or as kikyo you'll know that speed based formulas are much more powerful than they look on paper and it also activates Lunakin on her, allowing every move to do twice the number of attacks. And since her regular kit has now been um, increased in terms of DPS, even her um, meek uh, flow strike, which is considered a slash medium attack, if you have a pain and poison on the enemy, and I don't see why you couldn't with so many other ways of doing so, you can have a reasonable 1440 mod, it looks like here. And she still has her other support moves like Glint Gale. However, in first turn flash strike stance, now you can apply um, power int and speed down, I believe, I think it's 50 for three turn or is it five turns? I'll have to take a look at that. But yes, quite good utility. That being said, I think the vast majority of her benefits are already un uh, unlocked with the normal version without having to Stellar Awaken. So if you want an extra Stellar unit to blast away at things, you can definitely do that. Um, I'm not sure she would be a must-have for me. And note that as a free-to-play, my Sabira Gem income is limited. And so I have to be very choosy. If anything, I can always wait until later and see if I need her. But at the moment, I feel that she's a nice bonus add-on. But certainly not necessary for um, you know some of the fights nowadays. That being said, pretty good value, and the fact that you get increased rates on these three units, Aboro, Sirius, and Winefica, which many of you may or may not have had, gives you some good bang for your buck, especially if you don't have many of those units. So very decent value, but um, it is exactly like I said before. This is essentially WFS's way of selling you star charts with the dollar sign. And um, not a big fan of that because, you know, it's really just monetizing the game specifically to have you pay, right? So um, that's my thoughts. But in terms of raw value, there is value there. And so I have to give credit where credit is due. Now, we really have to talk about the star of the show, Melpithia or Melpi. Remember that this is the newest unit that's featured with uh, Rise Saga Part 2. And so she will be featured in the story. So if you like story characters, um, then, you know, you're going to summon out it anyways. If it's a 10 out of 10 waifu, then you're also summoning anyways. This one is also a pickup bonus. So if you hit a 5 star, it automatically becomes fully stellar, awakening 3 out of 3 gauges. 0.4.8 with a 10% chance on pulls 10. This is the Faithful, by the way. You can pull this three times. Everyone's in the game. There's also the bots, Rainbow Sisters, and Knights. Okay, and of course, let's take a look at our own version for the free players out there, how um, how it is. Now again, look at the uh, range of dates. Remember the free banners are 30 days and paid banners are only 16 days. Also, there is a 30 day Melissa one. I'm going to just state straight out, not worth pulling on, don't bother. Um, Unless you really don't have any form of Melissa as a free player. And, you know, even so, I don't know if it's necessary to pull. I would advise you not to if you're a relatively new player. I think there are better options out there. And if you're just trying to get Awakening Gages 1 out of 3, um, instead of using free stones, if you could be a light spender and pay one uh, paid summon, get the star chart for the, uh, the Slayer and just do it that way. You're getting more bang for your buck instead of wasting um, free stones for that. With a thousand paid stones, you guarantee two star charts essentially. Okay, so here's Melpy. She sounds very cutesy and she sounds very, um, you know, uh, waifuly, shall I say. What does she bring to the table? Other than being the fact that she is now a, a really, really good win support unit. She when her VC, she can deploy wind zone. She does give barrier um, shielding to everyone for one time. Um, in terms of the percentage, not really sure, but I imagine it is either in the 30 or 50% range for the VC. Not that anyone VCs anymore, anyways. Now, she is the first unit, to my understanding, that has um, two prayers. And so um, she can do offensive prayer defensive prayer or combination of such depending on how you want to um, do things and now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that she has first of all she has a move that actually sets wind zone so she's pretty good 
She also has um, um, a, a effect very similar to ES Tuva, where it's kind of the Banshee state or the look over there state, where basically you will not be targeted by single target skills. AoEs will still affect you, however, uh, single targets will not target you, so um, that allows your prayer um, to last because a praying, praying unit, if it gets hit by any damage, including zero damage hits that doesn't consume HP shields, then your prayer stops. And her prayers are quite useful. First of all, she is a healer. She can heal 50% MP, HP, 30% MP, and in win zone is double, so 100 slash 60. Full heal, a considerable amount of MP back. She also uh, does give her speed uh, with her wind zone move. She gives speed plus 50 for one turn. And it can awaken zone as well, as well if you use the same move. The main thing with her two different prayers. One essentially buffs um, type and physical res 30% for five turns, which is not great. I mean, everyone can do that. I mean, Nokoko, Nokoko could have done that a couple of years ago. Status immunity to all party members three times, which, by the way, you know you need nowadays because of all the silly boss mechanics where they keep on hitting with you status. EX4, I am looking at you. On activation turn, when you activate this move, it does, it can stack, uh, prophecy stack on all team members when anyone is attacked by the enemy. So AoEs will count, single targets will count, and these prophecy stacks interact with both types of prayers. They also give all stat boosts to um, your team, and you can get maximum of, I guess, three stacks, which is, I guess, um, you know, 90 um, stats. So almost like a mini AS Yifa, because remember, if Yifa can give stat boosts um, depending on her spirit, from what I understand. So, um, and this also win just like Yifa AS is. So you're getting some pretty good defensive buffs, and if there's more stacked prophecies, the shield will increase in effectiveness. I'm not sure how much higher it will go, but if you go to standard three stacks, it can go 30, 45, 60. If you're getting 60 physical res, 60 type res, on any type attack against you, you're over 100% shielding. So I imagine that is what you're looking at. Very, very powerful in shielding your team. Oh, not to mention 50% shield uh, damage received less, kind of like the oratorios of the world with Pizzica. So we all know how much damage reduction matters nowadays, but the fact you got status immunity plus type and physical res together, uh, elemental attacks will not do much, if anything, against you. And of course, you can buff um, yo, know, th that with additional shielding or debuffs on the enemy. On top of that, she has an offensive prayer that can give... Um, I guess power int and speed plus weapon damage up 50% and if you get enough um, prophecy stacks which do are the same stacks for both types of prayers I imagine that can stack up to 100% so essentially capped boosting for everything which my, mind you other support units or even other offensive units can give uh, examples are uh, Alumage for example Nocturnal Procession from Efi, um, you know Exosia. There's quite a few ones that get that. So, and even Sesta can give everyone that anyways. So it's not that that one is anything special. Well, it's still really, really good. But more importantly, you have all this in one unit. So you have a healer, you have a stat booster, like a mini AS Yifa. You now have abilities to shield type and physical res and also boost power, intense speed and weapon damage. Now note that this end, uh, bot, uh, unit does not give mental or physical focus, and so there's a huge loss there. She also can give um, up to 60% power and int down when in awakened zone, So and, and, and elemental break win. So she supports win teams very, very well, although her defensive capabilities can probably be used in any type of unit team comp, just like with AS Yifa. Um, now, to her stellar awakened. One thing... Oh, she does have the Link ability. She, uh, if you have Arcadia characters, two of them on the front line, you now get crit damage and magic crit damage increased by 20%. When you have four Arcadia units, and this is all kind of a theme of the subtype personality within the Rise Saga, it'll coll collide to all wind units. And so um, that is very, very interesting how that can be used. Not sure how, I, I'll call that as a small bonus because let's be honest, you're not going to have a whole team of Arcadias all the time. 
in terms of her stellar uh, units, um, when she, if it's unawakened, you'll get MP consumption down 50%. Now, I have to say WFS, it's pretty lame. If you happen to awaken SA unit and you enhance it, now she's going to get MP consumption minus 100% for all party members for one turn. And the silly part is, a 4.5 Valette can already give 100% MP reduction for one turn. So in this aspect, Mel Melpy is actually even weaker than a 4.5 Valette, at least in this one aspect. Kind of lame, um, and it's locked behind the SA board. Um, in terms of her other SA things, she does have an attack that gives herself uh, three stacks of Tranquility, remove one stack at the end of turn to kind of give a HP shield, which will allow her to keep her prayers lasting longer, as well as, um, I think it's remove all debuffs, as well as restore status. So, um, quite powerful in that sense. I will also say that um, one thing I will give Melpy uh, credit for, probably one of the first SA units that does not 100% depend on her SA ability to be effective. So if you happen to hit a 4.5 and, and just upgrade or side grade to 5 star, she is essentially quite good already because all those moves that we talked about are not locked behind the SA. So um, if, that wants, if that gives you additional incentive to pull, um, you can do so. But if you off banner in the future, for the most part, she is quite good except that she cannot give herself that HP shield with like I said um, each uh, uh, which will help her keep her prayers going and status recovery and so on and so forth so um, not an offensive unit by any stretch the real answer is should you summon and the answer I feel is that she combines two or three roles into one but she does them very well I'll say the shielding is extremely good if it's 50 or 60 60 but the um, I'll, and but the weapon boost as well as the dual debuff you can get from other party members if you're running her in a wind team and she does have wind elements obviously the 60 60 is covered by sora you also have 40 40 from sa suzette anyways if you're talking about in a wind team specifically power in and speed up 100 uh sesta can give that team wide if she if she starts and does her twin blade wolf now, obviously, we don't always have a Sesta team. We don't always have a win team. Outside wind, um, you know, 60-60 is one of the best debuffs out there. But it only works in Awakened Zone. So there is limitations to that. As well, when it comes to Prophecy stacks, each uh, prayer, it depends. So for the defensive one, it's only if you get attacked while defensive prayer is up um, that you stack a Prophecy. If you're in the offensive prayer, you only get a stack if you don't get attacked. And so uh, it'll take a little bit of tinkering to get the full benefits of those prayers out there. So obviously on the first turn, you won't have all the max stacks in terms of buffs, boosts, and so on and so forth. So it takes at least one turn to probably really super ramp up. And so as well as she does um, for win teams, I think win teams are quite good without her. If you're talking about outside wind, it depends how much of an upgrade you want over units such as AS Yifa, which still gives significant boost to your team. Um, however, the status immunity is extremely good nowadays, and so uh, very few units have that. Um, only newer units essentially can give status immunity to all party members. So in summary, if you want a unit who's very defensive, who can augment your wind team, and your wind team's not already a 1A, by all means, summon. If you already have a very strong win team and you don't need these support kits in your other uh, 1A teams, aka Ultra Miyunfa, for example, can be an extremely powerful um, support unit as well as AS Yifa, then I would say you can hold off for a little bit. But again, remember that even non s she has quite a bit of effect. And so if you happen to not get her today, you might have um, some luck later on and you can use her. As for me, I only have 10k stones or so. I have to hold off, although the temptation is always great. The banner is around for 30 days, and so, I mean, if my idea, if my um, you know, resolve weakens, I might summon. However, I don't plan to at this moment. I do have essentially all the um, best wind units, and especially with my recent hit on AS Melody, my wind team is essentially already set as is. And outside wind, I'm not, I will say this, I'm a little bit par um, biased. I don't really um, use um, support units nearly as much as I 
could. Um, case in point, I didn't even side grade ASU for, for a whole year. So um, you're probably talking to the wrong person in terms of recommending support units in that sense. All right. So that is all for now. And so um, again, with SA uh, Melissa, I'm holding off on side grading her for the time being as well. Anyways, um, Hopefully that gives you some indication of what to do with this banner. I know that we don't have much foresight anymore, and so I do rely on things like the AE Wiki and many community members to uh, give me accurate information. I, pro I apologize if my information isn't completely up to date at all times, but um, things are going to get a lot tighter. And so as much as this is a great unit, remember that as a free to play player, I have to recommend on a conservative side and not necessarily say every unit is awesome. You must summon, you must summon, you must summon. Otherwise you'd be broke on every banner, right? So um, if there's one to pass on, Mel, P Mel P, unfortunately, you'll have to bite the bro. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.